I've known I've known there's been a problem for a few years, but I've not known the full extent of it. And, I, and I, in my opinion, once you start labelling food as good and bad, which is what I was doing, so like carbs are bad and everything else is good, mm-hmm. you, you screwed from there on, really. Because the guilt causes you to be depressed about it, and then being depressed about it makes you eat more because you like eat your feelings, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, And in February 2020, I spent 586 quid. Like, I used to cram all the empty packets and stuff under the seats in the car so that you didn't see them. Yeah. I used to have mints all the time in the car to cover my breath smell. Mm-hmm. And I used to spray, like, deodorant and stuff in the car so it didn't smell of anything. There. So I had to just live in that for, like, I mean, it's like you're having an affair with someone. Blatantly just lying to really? the person that I love. So what was her reaction like when you told her? She was, cry- she was crying because... Obviously, it's shocking. She just held me, basically. And just let me, like, get it all out. Do you know what I mean? Because there's a little voice in you telling you that you're going to start your diet tomorrow, every time, and that voice will kill you. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I was. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Imbra the Words podcast, episode 14 today. Thank you very much for your continued support. Um, over the last few weeks, we are now now actually available on Spotify. Mm. So that's a big thing for us, I think. Loads of people asking for that. Yeah, they? we had a lot of um, comments, people saying that they're really enjoying the podcast, but they like to consume their podcasts through Spotify and Apple, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. we're slowly sort of trying to try and move towards doing that as well as the YouTube. Um, so the YouTube's going to stay because we like doing it and I think people do watch it as well. Um, but we are now available on Spotify as well. Yeah. For yeah. those that don't know, the, the advantage of having it on Spotify is that people, um, YouTube, obviously you've got to have your phone on that app yeah. and like live and the video showing, obviously. Yeah. Whereas Spotify, you can like lock your phone, can't you, effectively, yeah. and I still have it playing through I your I think that's the main system. benefit for people, isn't it? And, they, and they, So then they can <laughs> listen to it on a run or on a commute to work or whatever. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so if you are on Spotify um, and you want to get the podcast in that way, then just search in Brother Words um, and check us out in the in the podcast section. Mm-hmm. Um, what we've also done as well is like retrospectively added on podcasts as well. So most of them are on there. There are one or two that uh, we we felt didn't really like it wasn't really. Yeah. Worth so them like on. the Battle of the Brothers one, unless you can see um, what we're talking about, Robbie <laughs> like shitting himself down the garden. It's not really <laughs> funny, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but we, the ones we could put on, um, we have done. So again, go back and, and stream them as well. And then everything going forward from now on uh, will now be available on YouTube and Spotify, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, la- yeah, la- again, thank you for the feedback on last week's episode uh, with Baz. It was great for us as well to be able to sort of get out of the house and, and go somewhere else. <laughs> just full stop. Yeah. Just to get out of the house, really. <laughs> yeah, well, at the moment, that's true, isn't it? But, yeah. Um, yeah, so we are going to do more of that, go around, meet some new people all around the country. Um, and thank you again for to Baz for, uh, for coming on and to all our guests really because it's, it's only down to them doing it out of the goodness of the heart that's, that sort of gets us the recognition and stuff mm. so yeah thank you to we those guys we have another couple of travels lined up haven't we we've got yep. a Newark one that's definitely going to be soon mm-hmm. won't say who mm-hmm. potentially a London yeah which should be really good which is really exciting but we're not going to get too excited about that yet are we yeah yeah so just Narnia <laughs> just a case out of Mr. Tumnus. Yeah, just a case of Mr. Beaver. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> just a case of uh, keeping going, really. At the point, isn't it? So yeah, thank you again, everybody, for the support. And uh, yeah, episode fourteen is going to be a little bit of a different one this week, um, as you probably know from the thumbnail and the name of the video <laughs> yeah. by now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Tommy, take it away. What's this week going to be about? Yeah, so um, it's about. Um, basically an addiction that I became a more aware of during lockdown. Um, but that I've known, I've known there's a bit of problem for a few years, 
but I've not known the full extent of it until um, I properly looked into it during the lockdown period. Mm -hmm. um, don't want this podcast to be a ball of like negativity and whatever. It, I, th I think it's more to kind of a let people know w how it's been and stuff mm -hmm. for me. Um, and I, I actually think a lot of people will relate to it as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, so maybe not to the full extent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can sit here now and say, oh, I have a food addiction, right? And a lot of people at the same time as watching this will go, oh yeah, I think I have probably as well. Yeah. But then when I tell you the full extent, maybe not. Maybe not. So it's also for that intent yeah. as well. I think that, like you say, you've only really <laughs> learned about it probably in the last few months when you've been watching... YouTube videos and reading things and stuff. So if there's anybody else out there who's watching this, mm. who's you but six months ago, and if this helps one person, then it's worth doing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So should we start by doing a bit of a timeline? Because we've got, we've got some photos up of where I believe it kind of began and, and what caused it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, not the relationship I'm in now with Louise, but the one before. Um so I think that lasted like two and a half, three years. Um, and I think you, loads of people will be able to relate with this. When you get in a relationship, you put on like relationship weight. I mean, it's like... What is that? Is that like a comfort thing? Yeah. Think? So like you now, like going to the gym, amazing and stuff. Same as, we'll get to that exercise and stuff. But really nothing's better than sitting with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever with a Chinese or a pizza or whatever on the sofa with a blanket watching a Disney film. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know, I know ultimately, you mean. that comfort side of it is massive. Yeah, because, like, people like me, I'm not, I'm not trying to make out that I'm some, like, massive unit or whatever, but somebody who likes going to the gym, like, regular, and, mm -hmm. like, so I would say I get my lowest points mm -hmm. mentally and stuff is when I when I can't go to the gym or, you mm -hmm. know, if I'm injured or something or, or I can't yeah. go, if something forced me to not, not, not go. Like, people who are like that, I feel probably like I'm doing it for myself and for my own mental health and stuff, which I am to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But there is an element of it that you do it because you're single. Does that make sense? Massively, yeah. Does that a make, a like, massive part of exercise and, and everything is um, there's a bit of vanity through all of it. Yeah, but, it but be. because I'm single now, yeah, and obviously the long term, game, everybody's long term aim in life is to not be single eventually at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm you're essentially like trying to if you were like selling a product you'd want it to like look the best it did and yeah, that yeah. sounds like awful so it sounds mm. really vain but I, i'm not trying to say to me i'm not yeah. a dickhead about it i'm just saying that you're obviously going to try and put effort in your own self Definitely, and improve yeah. yourself when you're single to try and not be single down the mm. line like like you say the end game if you like of doing all this stuff and getting healthy and everything is that you're going to be able to be in a relationship one day where you neither you or your partner cares about that sort of stuff mm. do you know what i mean yeah um yeah okay so what you you put some weight on while you were with yeah me. yeah just like gradually over time um because yeah that it it is hard because wh when you found what you think is the one who are you trying to impress exactly yeah that's, that's what, what, you know what, I mean? what i was trying to make so now i've um kind of and i'm really open with it with louise as well like even when i'm running now I am thinking in my head, like when I go to places and when we go to like socialise and stuff, whether I'm with Louise or not, or just out with you lot or whatever, I do want to look good. And that, do you know I mean, that's not, that doesn't mean like, oh, who are you trying to impress? It's like, you want to feel comfortable. You mm -hmm. want to look nice. Mm -hmm. Don't matter if you're in a, in a relationship or not. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it can be, I want to look nice for you, even if I'm not with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. See, maybe if I see your friends out or whatever, I don't want them to think, fucking hell, who's she with? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. Or like, if you're going to go to some sort of event together, like a mm. wedding or something, like you don't, uh, particularly like, and I had this situation with my ex-girlfriend who, <laughs> she didn't live around, around here or anything. So every time that I met any of her family, it was like the first time they'd ever seen me. Do you mm. know what I mean? Or, and so that, that's another example where, you know, if you're going to go to a family wedding on their side or something, and you're going to meet new members of their family very like regularly. Mm -hmm. Again, you don't want to turn up looking like a slob deer, you know, no. and stuff like that. So, yeah. So started to put weight on during that um, period, but I've always been big. Like we'll put some pictures up here. Like I was a cute baby. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's always had a massive head. Sniper's dream. Sniper's from birth, dream. Yeah. It? But 
I've always been big and, and whatever, and even through junior school, high school and whatever, I'll, I'll say this now, I've never been bullied for my weight. Yeah. I've never been, it's never held me back in anything. Do you know what I mean? Like I've never, do you know what I mean? It's not been something that I've sat and, and cried about, do you know what I mean, during my childhood. Yeah, I, I think stage. you were like, it sounds weird, but it might have even helped you in a way mm. because it was like your personality and this is going to sound like such a classic thing to say. You were a bubbly character, <laughs> when yeah. you, like yeah. at school. Yeah. Um, and, and that, but it was true, wasn't it? Like that was mm-hmm. because you were like the joker of the pack and like the cla- yeah. class clown sort of thing. It probably didn't matter that you were fat, and if anything, it actually probably helped. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like a Biggins, a Chris Moyle sort of like fat. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it was always a big sort of lovable lad do you know what mm-hmm. I mean which is probably that was your character wasn't it yeah but I, know what you, what, I think what you're trying to say people is that even if you didn't have this issue or what you've had mm-hmm. you wouldn't be thin anyway would you because you no 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 you're natural like big built aren't you yeah but I also want to make it clear that like as we go on through this because it'd be really easy for people to think maybe it was something that happened when he do you know what I mean maybe he was picked on as a kid mm. that's not the case yeah. so we need to then later look at what it might be rather than that yeah yeah, yeah? Um, so then I think it was about nine months before that relationship ended that I decided I wanted to sort it out. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't know what it was that did that. I can't actually put a, a, my finger on exactly what it was um, that made me want to do it. I just did. Yeah. That's one thing I want to get across as well. You, you can never force, in my opinion, you can't just like force yourself to go and lose drastic amounts of weight. Yeah. So specify what you mean by like sort it out. You you mean you had a, a you thought lose weight. I need to lose significant amount of weight as well. Yeah. Um, wasn't happy with how I looked. Um, wasn't particularly happy with being out of breath running up the stairs. <laughs> and um, this was when you were working at DHL, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Do you think that I f- I think that your lifestyle at that time, obviously the relationship, was a part of that as well. But the fact that you like lived at home, but then you were in a serious relationship, so you were sort of like didn't really have a steady base. You were like work, come home, get changed, straight to her house, yeah, back home, like yeah. So I lived here in Swad. My work was in Colville, and she lived in Burton. Yeah, you you were never so like you're a all, constant triangle. Yeah, which like, don't you think things like fast food and stuff like that becomes easier when you live in that life? Yeah, you excuse and it like in in retrospect. Um, and obviously I'm not here to insult or whatever anyone because what's in the past is in the past and there's no hard feelings by side. Um, and I'm sure there isn't hers either. But in retrospect, like we were younger and whatever, I probably wasn't happy um, by that point. Do you know what I mean? So not for the whole relationship, obviously. Yeah. But I think something deep down must have said to me um, that I didn't feel that that was going to be a forever relationship. Yeah. And a part of me thought, Jesus Christ, like, if I look like this... When I'm single, I'm, I'm shafted. Yeah. Really? Again, that might sound vain, but... No, 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 that makes sense. I'm not going to have yeah. a roll about with anyone looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there might have been a bit of that in it as well. Um, I wonder if it was... Like, you can only really... You're probably, <clears throat> like, connecting the dots backwards, right? Because you're probably <clears throat> saying, right, nine months before we broke up, I started sorting myself out and then we broke up, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So you're looking back and you're thinking, I wonder if I knew that it was going to end and then get myself into this yeah. and make it end. It, might, it could have been the opposite way. It could have been, you just wanted to change anyway because of your lifestyle and you weren't happy. And then as you got more confident in yourself, you wanted to be single. Yeah, could have been. Do you know what I mean? Like There's, there's the opposite side. Yeah. There's loads of ways of looking at it. Because yeah, yeah. I, I personally felt a few times that as I was gaining confidence um, you grew apart from the person grew you were, apart, that's what I mean yeah, be, because I didn't always feel as if that was mutual that, yeah, like, yeah I didn't always feel that she was um, happy for you that you were confident happy, yeah. Yeah, yeah no yeah. I agree that's what I'm saying like maybe it was that way but <clears> either <throat> way so you do you mind saying about like numbers in terms of like what you weight and stuff um, yeah so just before at that point um when I lost, you know, when I decided I'm going to start the gym and stuff. So nine months before that relationship ended, I was 23 stone nine. Um, which mm-hmm. is a big tank in it, really. 
Yeah, I, I think it's difficult. It will shock me. people. Yeah. yeah, and especially family because I've said this, haven't I? Like, uh, you, you'd never look at me and think I was twenty three stone nine. No. I was big, but twenty three stone nine's massive. I'm only five eleven. I mean, I'm not. It's yeah, not like I'm a big I think that what the thing that like makes that number really shocking for me is that that's like not far off double me mm. now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, I think I'm like 12 and a half stone or something like that. Wet through. <laughs> so like, or something like in that ballpark. So like the idea that you would weigh me plus me holding myself. Do you know what I mean? Like me giving mm. myself a piggyback. Yeah. Which is essentially what it is, isn't it? It's like mm. two adults, isn't it? Yeah. So just to like, just some of the shit I was eating. Obviously, we laugh about it all the time. Don't yeah. Like so this, this is the, the comedy um, in this podcast, probably. <laughs> is, uh, there'll be, have, there'll be splatterings have, of comedy. We have some this. great moments where Tommy like talks about his eating habits when he was at his lowest, which was like as he got to being at his heaviest, which I assume that was the heaviest yeah, yeah. he been. Um, and he's got some absolute blinders of things that, yeah. yeah. So I used to have sugar on my cocoa pot. <laughs> <laughs> which you love don't yeah, you yeah that's brilliant um, <laughs> I think rock bottom was rock bottom <laughs> whole French baguette from Morrison's <laughs> they're like a big big one. yeah um, like a metre long French yeah stick. cut it open <laughs> um, and I put two microwave spag bowls inside <laughs> and a whole bag of grated cheese a whole bag of grated cheese um, in it yeah let us know in the comments if you'd like us to recreate any of these for like some more eating challenges. Well, this is the thing, and we'll get to this later. That to me still sounds stunning. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? I'm Maybe not we could do like an that. eating challenge one where you make me all the stuff you used to eat. That would be amazing. To try and eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and then the best sandwich ever that's still a thing. Um, still a thing, as in still my favourite sandwich ever, but I've not had it in years. Um, bread, cheese spread, so dairily, primula, anything other than them <laughs> two, and you're a nonce. What's it? And chocolate buttons, <laughs> <laughs> Cadbury's, uh, uh, you know, dairy milk chocolate buttons. Just try it. Wow. Just try it. Um, what about health wise? Mm-hmm. When you were that big, even though obviously you were still young, so what would you have been? Twenty two, something like that. Twenty one, twenty two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Physically, could you like feel any? You know, whether it be aches and pains or loss of breath or anything like that? Can you remember? Could you remember like? Feeling different. Losing what you my feel breath like now. a lot, big time. Yeah. Um, snoring massively as well. So obviously, Louise will tell you she's only in there. I'd still snore very little though. It's like intervals now. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Like <laughs> before, I was like a walrus. One yeah, night. it was horrendous. And yeah. if you're a snorer watching this and you're big, that's the reason. Yeah. We and need to be quite frank about that. Weight and is by a the way, massive thing with snoring. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't. I didn't mention it on the Room One Hundred One podcast because I knew that you wouldn't put it in. But that is bang top of my list. What snoring? Yeah, yes. like so. If uh, when eventually do get a girlfriend, even if they were perfect in every way, but they snored really loudly, that mm. would be a complete deal. I used to snore me. sitting up. I was that big. Oh, well, like, watching if telly. I did, yeah, stuff. if I just like closed my eyes <laughs> and like drifted off, I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Wake yourself time. up snoring. That's a classic. Yeah. But um, yeah. So what you're saying is that if you're severely overweight and you snore then that's the first place to look. yeah there's no point looking at anything else i like the time you're eating as well is a massive thing oh yeah because it gives you like sleep apnea doesn't it if yeah you eat too i used to eat um so a, a few other things so like we were saying about going from um swad to colville to burton to see her or whatever there is what i'd only like to describe as the gates of hell going through colville where you've got kfc there and mcdonald's there oh, of course. i yeah. remember on at least 10 occasions going to both on one day after like so after drive through kfc drive through burton that's really sad get it? to hers and have dinner <laughs> <laughs> really yeah i remember so many times like having dinner at hers and then i'd maybe w- at what like 10 p.m drive back to swad because yeah. like i'd still sleep here and go you know to work from here yeah um having like mcdonald's or chip shop or whatever on the way back like being full it didn't matter how full i was do you know what i mean it was just a, a thing it was just a and it's a i think it, it must be a comfort thing obviously we've both looked into a little bit haven't we in preparation for this yeah you know to give people a bit of an overview there's still a lot of 
mystery around food addiction, isn't mm-hmm. there? So um, some people deny that, like, I, I don't think it's the food that holds the addictive traits. Do you, I mean, I couldn't tell you one particular food that I'm addicted mm-hmm. to. It's like the... The dopamine hit. It's the dopamine hit you get from it and the 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 chemicals, the, you know, the chemical reaction that's going on in your head mm-hmm. when you're eating. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so to me, sat in the car, driving, listening to a podcast is like my biggest comfort nightmare. Oh, what? Like to the point now where I've had to think of, uh, we'll get to the current time now, but even still now, like Why? if I'm on my own in the car is my most dangerous time well because you, you're thinking about going to McDonald's or something. yeah because it's just like yeah because you're going to remember that aren't you because all everything's perfect to to that apart from and all you apart need to do is go food, and get food and, and it's then it's complete yeah. yeah 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 so the, the the science then the limited science mm. that there is at the moment around food addiction is, so obviously normal addiction, whether it be gambling, um, drugs, obviously alcohol, is you're addicted, so you regularly go back for that reward that you're getting from taking that that thing. So that dopamine hit that you're getting from having that thing, you're constantly going back and going back and getting it. And then scientifically, as you go further and further on, and people who've taken drugs for a significant amount of time will say this the reward gets less and less every time and because of that going down and down every time you take more and more or do it more often down the timeline to try and chase the same amount of hit that you were getting the first time you do it Mm -hmm. and that's what causes the addiction Mm. right so that's that's the sort of very brief science around addiction and then within the food specific, like the science around the food specific area, isn't there isn't a lot of it at the moment, is there? But it's a growing like field. Mm. And the science that they've done, which is on like rats and human testing and stuff, is that what they call highly palatable food causes that same trajectory. Mm-hmm. And highly palatable food is anything high in fat, sugar or salt. Mm-hmm. So chocolates, crisps, biscuits, Junk food. I forget with two spag bowls. In. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that all the science at the moment points towards it, it, it. That is something you can actually have mm. an addiction to. Yeah. Which is what we're going to go on to now in terms yeah. of like, in terms of you. So so back onto the timeline then. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. So obviously got very big um, eating that amount of stuff. Um, me and my ex would have like two at least takeaways a week probably. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, decided to get on it. So I joined Green Banking Squad, um, and but before that point, I'd done like Slimming World before. I've done Weight Watchers before when I was in like year nine, ten, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and you know, lost a stone or two, maybe. I can remember going back to year eleven. Um, Tom and Connell, shout out Tom and Connell, were both like what the hell like, I looked really different because over the six weeks holiday I think I'd lost like two and a half three stone or mm-hmm. something do you know what I mean like so I dabbled with stuff with um, diet stuff but this one I just went completely ridiculous basically yeah so between that joining Green Bank and the end of um, I've got it written down here um, yeah like the start of 2017 I, I was doing so I was at the gym every day, Monday to Friday. For those that know what HIT is, it's high intensity interval training. Yeah. yeah. Um, you meant to maybe do what ten, fifteen minutes of that. Louise does it now. You know, like so you can be jogging or walking and then running in short intervals and blah blah blah. Yeah. So where somebody might say, "Oh, you need to run to lose weight. I'm going to go and do a half an hour jog." This is ten mm-hmm. or fifteen minutes of sprinting for thirty seconds walk for a minute, sprint for 30 seconds, walk for a minute, etc. And mm-hmm. what it's doing to your body is different because it's firing different fires yeah. up and it loses more weight, essentially, than you do, you do, you do the other way. Yeah. yeah. So um, in nine months, so on my, on my first day at Green Bank, I did um, four, sorry, four minutes 
like fast walk slash jog, one minute sprint for 15 minutes. And I was sick, like on the treadmill in my hand. And yeah. I had to run to the toilet. Yeah, so that must have been at like that weight. That out. must be yeah. well or on twenty three stone nine. You shouldn't be doing that. No. Do you know I mean you meant to ease yourself in? Yeah, yeah. Within three months, I was sprinting for three minutes, jogging for two minutes for half an hour. Mm-hmm. Amazing feeling when your body's like changing and you're yeah, like, yeah. Do you know what I mean, mm-hmm. um, and at the end of the nine months, I was sprinting for f- for four minutes fast jogging for one minute for an hour which is ridiculous yeah do you know what i mean like i would be faint when i finished i'd be staggered i used to like wring my shorts and my t-shirt out in the thing in the changing rooms and how many calories were you burning like because you know on the, on the treadmills it tells it was you over a thousand yeah i was gonna say it would have been yeah yeah um and my diet so i was still at dhl charlotte who watches charlotte farmer um she was my colleague and she'll back me up on this i used to have Belvita biscuits in the morning. You know, you get four in a packet. Mm-hmm. I'd have two boiled eggs, um, a low-fat dairy cheese triangle, and a pack of turkey meat. You know, mm-hmm. like five slices of turkey. Mm-hmm. And then I'd come home and I'd have two corn chicken burgers, two boiled eggs, mm-hmm. um, and a banana. And it was every day for like nine months. And on my last day of that, I was 14 stone three. So just put that into perspective. Nine months, twenty three nine to fourteen three. Jesus. That's a different level of like unhealthy. Yeah. So then I'll show you a picture of. We'll put some pictures up now. I actually think I was too thin at that weight. I don't mm-hmm. like how I look when I look at it now. Um, my mum especially was like quite concerned. Do you know I mean saying like you look ill? Yeah. I think I did borderline look ill. Yeah, and this is what we're saying about <coughs> that would be like an average weight for somebody of your like height whatever mm-hmm. but because that's not really what you're supposed to look like if that makes sense that's exactly, not your build yeah. your head looked big for your body and stuff like that didn't yeah. it like, do you know what I mean I look really strange what about like <coughs> loose skin did you have an issue with that no not really I've no. got a little bit like um, where you know your belly button is mm-hmm. um, a tiny bit there but I think with enough like if I was to do enough like ab workouts and stuff I'd be, it'd be fine yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I kind of blame that period a lot for my relationship with food now and like just ha- just appearance and everything. Because in, in my opinion, um, if like as soon as you start dabbling with diets and stuff or extreme diets. So yeah, I didn't mention that. I was cutting out all carbs, wasn't I? So I didn't eat bread, pasta, potato or rice. Yeah. For That's all, all that period. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I continued doing that for quite a while afterwards, like a year or so afterwards. And, I, and I, in my opinion, once you start labeling food as good and bad, which is what I was doing, and so like carbs are bad and everything else is good, mm-hmm. you you screwed from there on, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just in, it's just embedded in you that like some things are in, inherently bad for you, mm-hmm. and you should therefore feel guilty for eating them. Yeah. Yeah. And that just messes you messes you up, really. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so then that relationship ended um, whilst I was still, you know, I was probably around like the 15 stone mark. So I still lost a little bit after that. Um, DHL all finished um, and I started Drayton Manor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, I've got a picture I could put on um, of like one of my first days at Drayton Manor looking like really thin. Um, but obviously I was happy because I'd got out of a relationship that I wasn't happy in. Yeah. I was happy with how I looked and stuff. Do you know what I mean, I felt yeah. healthy. How did it make you feel when, if you'd go down Burton, for example, and people hadn't seen you for <coughs> six months, which is doable, isn't it? Mm. Like, with not living in Burton, etc. Yeah. And and you were, what, five stone lighter than the last time you'd seen them? Or yeah. How did it make you feel? It was amazing. Say? Everyone was really nice. And again, you definitely get a hit out of that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean, just the comments and the people saying stuff and whatever and, Makes you realise how shallow girls are. Because, like, you know, girls that wouldn't look at you twice at school and then you see them and they're, like, all of a sudden being a bit flirty and whatever. Really? And you're thinking, like, I am the same person. Yeah, yeah. I mean? But Where I don't you? blame people, to be honest. I'm th- this is a bit controversial and I might get a bit of stick for this, but, like, I'm not really behind the biggest beautiful stuff. Yeah. Um, 
I don't want anyone watching this who is to think, oh, what a cock. I just, I need you to understand where I've come from and like, as in the real hard work and like torture I've had to put myself through at times to, to look better and feel better and be healthier. Being big is not nice at all. Yeah. yeah. And it's really unhealthy. Purely from a health perspective. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, I know people, some people use it as like a blanket to like, make them feel better about not doing something about it mm-hmm. and, I'm, and i'll say i say that in like a sympathetic way not a not an arsey way mm-hmm. um because th- there's a little voice in you telling you that you're going to start your diet tomorrow every time and that voice will kill you yeah definitely sorry <laughs> mm. it's all right well because it's because it's always telling you that there's another day to do it and then mm five years later there's no more days to do it because you thought it's done and you can't get out of bed sort of thing yeah do you know what I mean mm-hmm. what do you think to like because obviously particularly in America now there's a, there's a big movement towards plus size like models even on like catwalk models and stuff mm-hmm. and catwalk models particularly like when we were younger remember like in the noughties and stuff that was the first time they ever came, came forward with this whole idea of like size zero and Victoria Beckham got really thin and everybody was like saying, oh, yeah. you know, she looks unhealthy and stuff. And you see some of these like catwalk models that are unhealthily thin. Like, like everybody mm-hmm. would say that it's unhealthy to be that thin. Yeah. So then why is there so much support for somebody who's unhealthily big? Yeah. So the, they're I mean? going through just as much shit. The ones that like a size, whatever. Because you can't be that size and not have something going on upstairs. Like, like a mental illness in yeah. some way. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so joined Drayton Manor in April 2017 after DHL. Mm-hmm. I've just split up with um, the previous girlfriend. Um, and feeling really happy at that point. And like I say, single. Um, there's, a, there's a massive like lease of freedom there when you've had two or three years in like a mm-hmm. relationship you weren't too happy in um eating better still i was running not to the extent as i was during that big weight loss but i was still doing like three five k's a week around swad and whatever mm-hmm. and just felt good um and i didn't feel like i was fighting any kind of problem you're still stage. weighing yourself and stuff like that yeah. yeah yeah still weighing myself but never like um i generally didn't feel as if I was fighting any food urges or anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It like almost wasn't on my mind because I was just in that routine of like, that's my breakfast. I'll have corn stuff when I get home. I used to, there's a canteen at Drayton Manor for anyone who's, uh, any of my old colleagues that are watching. And like, it was a classic canteen. Do you know what I mean? Like chips and stuff and nuggets on a Friday was like a big thing. Yeah. I've never had any of it. And it never even tempted me. I used to either bring something from here take something from here or um they used to sell like salad boxes and they used to sit with a little cheese salad cheese and egg salad it was banging um and that's actually what um intrigued louise about me so she we never spoke like we used to sit opposite in the staff room and just do our own thing and she still says now how like she used to think that was really like disciplined of me to sit there with a salad when everyone was like oh it's burger Oh, is it cheeseburger? <laughs> oh, they've got turkey teddies on. And stuff like that. <laughs> and like... Was everybody... F- so we've had the conversation on the <laughs> careers podcast about um, working in an office like I do. Yeah. There's definitely um, a move. You As a career progresses in office, there's also a move towards being fat, essentially. Mm-hmm. Right? So a lot of people who work in, in an office long term are fat. Yeah. Uh, was everybody fat at Jake Manor? No. No, no, not really. There's a few, but I don't think it's. I don't think that was um, because of the job. If anything, it's quite physical. Like as in, you know, a lot of walking about, especially if you're like an attendant. So you could be an operator or an attendant. An operator, obviously, you sat around a little bit, but yeah, um, operators like you're constantly up and down doing Tendons all the harnesses yeah. and stuff. And like, depending on what area you're on as well. Like if you're in Thomasland, back arse of uh, the arse end of Thomasland, used to be so far away to the staff room that they had to have extended breaks if you're on that ride because the walk from the staff room to the ride was 12 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like you, you couldn't actually get to the staff room and back during your 15 minute break. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, all good. Obviously um, met Louise. Um, 
and still for um, some time after that, I was still sticking to my diet and whatever. Moved to Milton Keynes with you, joined the gym. I'll put a picture up now. Like that was when I shifted towards like living with you because you introduced me to like weights and stuff rather than running. And there's some really nice pictures where I was really happy with how I looked like my top half, especially like my legs were toned from my running already, but like a, I had a bigger chest and mm-hmm. arms and like that was probably the, the peak of like being happy with how I looked. Yeah. Um, and then again, yeah, you just slip slowly into like comfortable. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, let's just have one Domino's. Um, do you know what I mean? And that'll be yeah. fine or, you know, because Louise wants, wanted to encourage me to have things like a healthy person. Do you know what I mean? Like, have chips with your meal once, like, or twice in a week and just make sure your other meals are lined up nicely yeah. and you're not taking the piss kind of thing. So was there <clears throat> any of that, the fact that you sort of slipped back into it as an issue, any of that associated with the fact that you were now working at a restaurant, do you think? Mm. Probably didn't help. Mm. Probably didn't help, but I wouldn't say that was the the main thing, I don't think. Like I say, I think it's just a, again, it was just a comfort thing. and Just to do with the relationship, I guess, yeah. the fact you're in a relationship. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, so it started to, from like the end of 2017 onwards, was like a, just a slow, gradual decline or incline of weight, mm-hmm. <laughs> decline of like mental state in regarding food. Um, and then I, I, obviously I've never lived directly with Louise until recently. And that makes it easier to be bad with food. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So this is the, like the shameful bit really that like all along she thought I was still being disciplined with it. Do you know what I mean? But well, whilst you're in Milton Keynes and she yeah, was Yeah, yeah. Milton Keynes wasn't really the problem. Like when I lived with you especially, it was fine. It was more like the year in Milton Keynes when you weren't there and I was living with Alex and... Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Just, I was basically just eating whatever I wanted and but not telling her, which is awful really. And then um, in Milton Keynes... Um, Sorry, when I moved to Leamington and I lived with a colleague and Lexi, our sister, um, that was the worst period. So we moved to Leamington in April 2019. So that to February 2020 was the worst period by an absolute That's really recent, isn't it? Yeah. That's like last year, this time last year. Yeah. Um, And... So when you say bad or it's the worst it's got or whatever just day to day for people to sort of understand what you're talking about mm-hmm. what were you what were you doing what were your eating habits and so my daily routine was waking up saying today's the day that i sort my shit out i'd have like porridge and a banana or something mm-hmm. go to work um like everything's good fine walk through the kitchen maybe see some nachos on the side, eat one single nacho, and then my whole head just go in, like that, just like, oh, you fucked it now. Start tomorrow. We'll start tomorrow instead. So because you've had one nacho and you've screwed it, you might as well just piss it, because today is the last day you're going to have any of this. Yeah, that's what you're telling yourself. Yeah, so I'd have like burger, chips, whatever at work, drive... Um, let's say it's a day that I'm not going to Louise's. So finish work, maybe grab, uh, maybe. So Louise will say, "Oh, what are you cooking tonight?" And I'll say something like, "Oh, um, I'm gonna get steak and salad." Really, it's like pizza. Do you know what I mean? Not tell her. Go home, eat it. Definitely have dessert like flapjacks, yum yums, whatever. This my like weaknesses basically. Eat all that. She'd be like, how was your steak? I was like, yeah, really good, thank you. Do you know what I mean? Like, blatantly just lying to... Really? The person that I love, do you know what I mean? Um, Did you ever, like, send her a photo of food that weren't yours? Um, no, but there was a few times where, like... So, like, I ordered Domino's once. Um, and 
because I just wanted to sit and eat it and enjoy it and watch like something, I told her that I was going out on a run for like 45 minutes or like doing a Joe Wicks yeah. thing. Do you know what I mean? That's very sad, isn't it? It's sad but funny. Do you know what I mean? Um, so she, she, did, she didn't message you because she thought she, you were out. And yeah, you were exactly. Just, like eating dominoes. Mm. Um, You're right. I'm going to stop for a bit. That's okay. Or like I thought, what about times where like I've told her that I'm out, I'm out on a run, but really I'm like in the car going to like a drive through or going to get food. Like what? If, what if I'd have like crashed or something? Mm. Yeah. Um. And then if it was like a day that I was going to see Louise. Um, I'd maybe like eat stuff on the way to go into hers. So then you could eat normal at hers, and you because you wouldn't be hungry because you'd already eat before. Exactly. Yeah. So if we had something healthy, she'd be like, "Oh, I've ate that, and I'm full, and I'm not eating any. You know, I'm not, I'm not pestering her or saying like, oh, I really crave this bad stuff yeah. in the evening.' So to her, that was good. Do you know what I mean, like, proud of me for doing that. But really, it was because I'd satisfied that craving on the drive there. Yeah. So, were you putting weight on? Then? Yeah, of course I was, but because it, it was slowly over time. Yeah, do you know what I mean, and like we still used to go to the gym together and stuff, and do weights and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, it wasn't all just drastically piling on. Do you know what I mean? It was just over time. Um, and if it was. Like, I used to cram all the empty packets and stuff under the seats in the car so that she didn't see them. Yeah. I used to have mints all the time in the car to cover my breath smell. Mm-hmm. And I used to spray, like, deodorant and stuff in the car so it didn't smell of anything. That So I've had to just live in that for, like... It's, I mean, it's like you were having an affair with someone. But what were you... Um, I think some people would be wondering, like... Why you were hiding it from Louise? Do you um, mean, like, what, what were you worried that she was going to say or do? Or because, um, you know, if you were just like eating crap and you just like th- this is the difference I want to get across to people at the start when I said, oh, you might think you've got a food addiction as well. Being a foodie is not having a food addiction. Yeah, liking food isn't the food no. addiction, is it? If you're one of these that like just can't turn down a biscuit when someone offers it, like that's not a food addiction. Mm-hmm. If that was the case, I could just say, Louise, I'm in a right fat fuck at the minute. Aren't mm-hmm. I? Like, sort me out. It's knowing that it, it was something, uh, like a massive problem. And that's really hard to admit yeah, yeah. to anyone, isn't it? I didn't want it to be ashamed of me. Um, going through all that massive weight loss before, like that's... You know, she fell in love with that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, because when you first met, you were five stone lighter than you are now. That's like, uh, that's what you were thinking at the time, I mean. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then you're thinking, is she going to yeah. not want to be with me anymore? And stuff yeah, like that. and that's not the case. Like, I don't mean she fell in love with you that thin. light version of yeah, me. Yeah. She fell in love with, like, the commitment and strength that takes. Yeah, yeah. And, like... The other side of it, like, as in, I've never been diagnosed with being depressed at all, Mm -hmm. but how you feel when you're in that cycle, it it can't, it it can't be far from it if if it isn't, Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's like, because the guilt causes you to be depressed about it, and then being depressed about it makes you eat more, because you, like, eat your feelings kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Because what you're chasing that whether it's a minute or two minutes or a second of high, whatever it is, mm. of you enjoying the food. Yeah. And then and then it's 10 hours of regret and eating it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, that, that'd that be my, like, routine, really. And then you go to bed, and then I'd watch, like, videos of, like, inspirational stuff. So, like, Joe Rogan talking about diet and addiction. and Like keto diets. Yeah. Just generally like inspirational stuff and I'd go to bed feeling like right genuinely this is it now like 
and that would be it. And then that, that it was just that every day. Wake up, still feel like I'm on it. Eat so one little thing, and then and then throws you off. Yeah. So you said that when you were with your ex girlfriend <coughs> for however long it was, two years, you were happy and just doing your own thing, eating mm-hmm. what you wanted, but it didn't matter. Yeah. And then you had an all of a sudden bang. I need to sort this out. Uh-huh. What was the difference between that and need to sort this out and the one you're having in your head every day? Do you know what I mean? Um, because the one you're having in your head every day, you're not listening to. Because yourself, I needed to. Um, because I knew that that first relationship wasn't the one. Yeah. And so I needed to sort something. Whereas this one, you know, I know I'm going to be with Louise forever regardless. Do you know what I mean? And I know she loves me however I am. So it's harder to like... It wasn't a necessity. You have to find another reason to do it. Do you know what I mean? And that's really difficult to yeah. do. Because to, to drag yourself out of an addiction is like a really hard thing to do. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, isn't it? Like, mm-hmm. we all know that. Um, but when relationship and, and love and stuff isn't really a factor in it, like, that's a major card you've removed from, like, the deck of, like, support do you know what I mean like it's you mean you've lost like a big reason to sort yourself out yeah 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 but like because that because then you're thinking like okay so I'm only not I'm only not struggling with food and stuff when I'm not with someone am I just like destined to be alone and that's it and then that's a horrible feeling as well and that adds to your depression and stuff do you know what I mean like is being alone the only thing that makes me feel like a normal person with food yeah i know what you mean because i've been single for like well coming up for two years now Mm -hmm. in that two years time i've definitely been healthier Mm -hmm. more disciplined and achieved more in my own personal life than i have in the 22 years before that yeah and that's because there's an element of being single that makes you completely selfish. Like, to, you do it, you're only there doing it for yourself because you've got no one else to do it for. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And another reason why I knew that I was depressed during that time as well, so mainly, like I said, the Leamington time up to February 2020, if I wasn't starting, starting work till four, I'd sleep till three. Mm. This is what I was saying it about It doesn't matter the, what time I went to bed, whether I went to bed at 11 p.m. or 3 a.m. in the morning. My curtains, curtains would be drawn and I'd be lay there in the dark, sleeping, until my alarm went off an hour before my shift. Yeah. So 3pm, the sun's shining on a Saturday, and I'd just be opening my curtains with my pyjamas. Yeah. I was sort of saying about whether the job you were doing didn't help, and people would think that, what I mean by that is you work in a restaurant, you're surrounded by food all day, mm-hmm. temptation, it doesn't help. I didn't mean that, I meant like, purely working hours the and schedule and the lifestyle of it yeah like i think it's not the cause but it's a, a massive um it's a massive influence yeah because if you if you're doing a finish on a <coughs> friday for example mm-hmm. so you're there until what 2 a.m mm-hmm. and then you're not back at work until six so you're doing the saturday night then rather than what would potentially be deemed as a healthy thing to do which would be sleep until 10 11 get up have a healthy like breakfast maybe do something with your day mm-hmm. go to gym or something watch some football or whatever go back get changed before you go to work like ha- make a day of the saturday mm-hmm. even when i lived with it usually you would like because you'd usually see louise maybe on the sunday or whatever so that you'd just waste that whole day wouldn't you just like yeah. say, just sleep in and mm-hmm. uh, which again i think there's a lot of people maybe work in that industry that do the same yeah you just get caught in that um in the cycle of it don't you mm, definitely um so yeah the the peak of it february 2020 um i'm going to split this nicely on the screen for the viewers um because it will make a, a lovely aesthetically pleasing uh, thing but i broke down so so i used to hide my banking stuff from louise because of all the bad stuff that was on there yeah um so, like, if I was paying on Apple Pay or whatever, like, I, I purposely, like, not want her to see the screen because, like, you know, it comes up with your latest transactions yeah. and stuff. So, I've gone through it. And in February 2020, I spent 586 quid. Um, 
And like I say, I'll split it on here on the oh, screen. Yeah. If people are wondering why I'm looking at my phone a lot during this podcast, it's because that's where I've made all my notes for this one. It was a n- too much to like write down on a piece of paper. So almost 600 quid in, in a month. So it was mainly Greg's, um, Krispy Kremes, Starbucks. You might think, oh, Starbucks isn't bad. It is if you're having like caramel frappuccinos and donuts and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? I'm not nipping in for a skinny latte. Yeah. yeah. Um, McDonald's, absolute nightmare. Um. yeah just stuff like that really and the big one was like Sainsbury's and co-op so you might not think that but I could go into like Sainsbury's get like a couple of sandwiches crisps, chocolate, yum yums mm-hmm. muffins you know like you can buy a, a lot of stuff for like a ten yeah I'm going to say it's a ten yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah so obviously that's really bad to the point now where we're like you know because we're, we're doing mortgage stuff now and like thank god it's all fine now i say fine like we'll get we'll get onto that later but um yeah in the back of my mind i'm thinking like if a mortgage advisor was to look at this and think what the hell's going on but i'm i'm more than happy to admit that before lockdown i was it was just like pay to pay payday to payday kind of thing yeah you you're, I mean? you're, you're living by but a lot of people will relate to yeah, that yeah, like yeah. A, do you know what i mean not to have like debts and stuff is a rarity isn't it yeah yeah you know i mean uh, which i haven't had it's just like didn't have any savings yeah i didn't have savings yeah, yeah yeah um and then moved yeah so like if i had um a train let's say i had a conference or something in birmingham i'd get on the train at tamworth um get something from the time of the train station, like a bacon sandwich or something. Again, Louise at this point still thinks I'm eating no bread, pasta, rice or potato at all. Really? Yeah. We used to, she used to sit on her phone um, and like help me look for meals that didn't have carbs in them because she wanted to cook for me. Like, I mean, how sad is that? But Um, and and I'd I'd go straight out of the house and eat McDonald's or Domino's or something. Um, yes, I think if there's definitely going to be some people who watch this who are like uneducated on the subject and don't really understand like food addiction and the difference between that and just being like a fat bastard. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. And I think that this it hits it at home massively because. This is like this isn't six hundred pound a month on food, which some people would spend six hundred pound a month on food. This is six hundred pound a month, above and beyond your normal food budget, secretly spent behind your girlfriend's back yeah. on unhealthy food. Yeah, and, and that is that is pure like addiction because that's the same sort of money that you'd be spending on we should probably coke or something like that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's on that level, isn't more it? than that. Probably. Yeah, yeah. We should probably mention as well because I'm forgetting that not everyone knows Louise, and I know we're going to introduce her later. Louise isn't the kind of person that I would have to hide this from. She's really supportive. Mm-hmm. She's amazing at everything. But that's why I hid it, because she's so amazing. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Because I didn't want her to be ashamed of me or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So then, yeah, I'd get the train to New Street. New Street is an absolute monopoly of um, oh, of course, yeah. trucks for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got a Krispy Kreme shop. <laughs> <laughs> Not a store, a <laughs> shop, right? Yeah. I used to buy like a pack of three... From there, I think they're like oh, six quid. They don't. Donuts, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, and yeah. just smash the lot, like all of them in one go. Then the, you've got a Greg's in there. In there. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got McDonald's on the ramp that we spoke to about with uh, Baz last yeah. week. Yeah. Um, so just an absolute plethora of doom in there. Um, so yeah, I could, mm. I could spend 15, 20 quid easily in New Street just going to a conference or whatever. Yeah. And then Louise would say, like, have you eaten today? I was like, yeah, I just got a salad on the way through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that could be a normal day, and then I'd still come back and, like like I said, be eating with Louise and stuff. Yeah. Um, so the fact that you've written this down, like the numbers and stuff, is mm-hmm. that because you felt a financial impact of it? Or was it just out of interest, you thinking, how much am I actually fucking myself Just here? out of interest. Yeah. Because, yeah. like... For my age, especially, like you, you know, uh, like pay and stuff. I'm on a, I'm on a good job. Do you know yeah, I mean? good yeah. salary and stuff. Especially Definitely. for someone with not 
huge like outgoings as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was still work, like living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah, like there's got to be some. There's yeah, a massive it doesn't make any sense hands. why I'm yeah. not saving here, and then it's oh, I'm spending six hundred quid on food. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and, do, and do you know what the bit? Do you know why I think it took so long to do it? And I've written this down. The disadvantage of mental strength, right? And that might sound a bit weird, so let me explain it. Because I know that I've lost nearly 10 stone in nine months. Because I know that like like now, I can go for runs and stuff. It's almost like that, that voice I was telling you about earlier that's looking out to kill you to say you're going to start tomorrow is heightened by the fact that I know you have deep down that thought. I'm strong enough to go and lose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's bad to be so... It's bad to know that you can lose yeah, weight. Yeah, whereas if you never had that voice over time, just loses credi- credibility over yeah. years and years because it's like, oh, I've ne- I've, even if that voice, you're conscious of that voice, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, you're going to sort this out. Mm. Really, you're also thinking, I've not sorted it out before, I'm not going to sort it out again. Whereas mm. yours has some experience to it some sort of credibility behind it which yeah. is we've do, we've been here before and uh, and we have actually done it before yeah on a quite severe level do you know what I mean so you know that yes it was before yes it was years ago whatever mm-hmm. but something in you has before sorted this out yeah do you know what I mean yeah and it makes it work it makes you just think oh, I could do it tomorrow again do you know what I mean, I've I've got a little bit of experience with that, but on like a l- load smaller level. That's mm-hmm. a that's a bit like my relationship with running. Because mm-hmm. for those that don't know, I ran the London Marathon a few years ago. Yeah. So the training element of that, I think I ran like four hundred k in six months or something. Like it was yeah. joke. I just ran all the time when I was at uni. And again, what you were saying earlier about you feel your body getting like better and better or something like. For somebody who was a complete non-runner before, I went from a non-runner to doing the marathon in nine months, which is, I completely do not do that, by the way, mm-hmm. anybody, because it's just so unhealthy and it hurts your body massively. But mm-hmm. like, I felt like for somebody who'd gone from a non-runner to do that, I felt like I'd like cracked it. I'd like done running, if you like, I've, I've finished it. Mm-hmm. So I want to do regular runs at the gym now, just for my own physical health. Um, just, just sort of keep it up, keep on top of it. Mm-hmm. But like, I, uh, having done that demotivates me from running because it's like I know I know that I could do a, a 5k or a 10k within a few weeks of like doing the training mm-hmm. because I've done it before on a massive scale yeah so I just don't run <laughs> it's just that's <laughs> so stupid doesn't it it's like, like you completed isn't it yeah but like, like I don't run because I know that I could mm-hmm which sounds ridiculous, and I know it does. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I would love to be able to, and I feel like if I hadn't done all that running before, I, I might do regular like five k's or whatever because, but because I hadn't taken it to an extreme level. Mm-hmm. But like with what you, the extremes you went to, are losing weight, I went to that extremes with running. Yeah, like to a dangerous level. To the, I was doing three three and a half hour runs around Sheffield when I was a student. Mm-hmm. It's just completely unsustainable in every way, do you know yeah. I mean? and that's and it, again, I, I, know, I know what you mean with that, but it's obviously it's a different thing. It's weird, but I understand, it? yeah, I understand it definitely. Um, so, just trying to bring it round now to like now. Um, when was Bev's birthday? Do shout out Auntie Bev. Mm, you got a calendar on there. I think it was March the seventh. I think it was the Saturday because that might have been okay. That's perfect. The last night out. I think the lockdown started the week after. Mm. It was so, close. Wasn't yeah, it? that was. It was the very start of lockdown. Essentially, that 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 night out was the last night out I went on before we got locked down. Yeah. So this was very much the Bev's do is the breaking point mm-hmm. f- was for me anyway because so I got up that day um, and as I've already told you what my daily routine was I woke up that day thinking today is the day that was every day um, but I know I've got Bev's do tonight. So Saturday we had our auntie Bev's birthday do on yeah, the Saturday Yeah, social club, mm-hmm. and there's a buffet on. <laughs> yeah, now that is absolute criminal. Yeah, I mean buffet is that's like it's elite for everybody, but like for somebody from South Derbyshire, and who's had our life as well, like the chance of any buffet is just biblical, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. unreal. Um, 
and so I've I've got myself worked up all day. I've eaten really healthily, and I'm like, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna eat anything carby. I'm just gonna have like salad, some meat stuff. You know, just like keep it clean, so that you can just go ham. If you're the pun, like at the at Bev's do. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. As in, oh, eat including including during the, the day, and then also at the buffet. Oh, okay. Just like, do you know because I'm trying to be good and I'm trying to get back on track and to be good to me meant. Don't eat any carby stuff. At the buffet? Yeah. At all. Yeah. That's not unlikely though, isn't it? A yeah. Is well, in, yeah, it is. But so I've got all day, really good. Got to Bev's, had blah, 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 blah. And one sausage roll. <laughs> like, and I don't mean even a big one. I mean like, you know, like the little party sized ones. And I ate it and I just sat there like, I feel fucking awful. Not physically awful, just what? mentally like guilty. I was like, I've ruined it again. What do you mean you ate it? So did you go up to the buffet and get buffet? I think get I had. I think it was like Louise didn't want it, or Maisie maybe didn't want it, mm-hmm. and I just sat there like, why have I just done that? Basically, do you know what I mean? So I, can, I can remember you being like, not arsey or whatever, I but was like, off one but like we went out that night. Like or some other of us, and I don't think you came, did you? Or, or did no, you come? I did and then, come. You, then you left early. Or something. Left early, yeah. You just, you so just I just stood there, like didn't seem happy at all, really. So I ate it, um, and I, I need to to say this to explain where the guilt and the depression of it comes from. And what, in fact, just bottom line, why food addiction is so terrible. You don't sit there thinking, "Oh, I really want bad food," and that's and you know, and that's why you feel sad. Or like, because you can't have it, I'm sad. That's not what it is. It's the fact that like the food addiction has your whole life on strings at all times. Yeah. And it's the loss of control. Yeah, your entire your, your mood thinking, is dedicated. Yeah, it's sat there dictated. thinking, why is that ruining my night? That's that's the bad part of addiction. And that's actually what the problem is. Do you know what I'm saying? Why am I sat here thinking about, you know, what I'm eating next Tuesday? So, so your mood and how you feel about life in general, your mental health, is all dictated by your relationship with food. Yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah. I know I'm not al- alone on that, and I also know there's other people who think that's weird, but then like they can't go a day without smoking a joint of weed or whatever. You're that is the same thing. Can't go on a night out without doing coke. Exactly. Yeah, it's, the it's thing, exactly yeah. the same. So. um but anyway, so yeah, I ate that sausage roll. I went in the toilets at the social club and threw it up. Put Did my you? fingers down my throat and threw it, basically everything that I ate. Up. Probably brightened the place up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the best of toilets have smelled in there for ages. <laughs> yeah. um, came back in, felt better for that. But well, because it brought you back down to base Yeah, I, I felt like I was, at, I was at like good again. Yeah. Um, you know, and I was, always, I was almost uh, going to go a whole day without eating anything bad. Which is yeah. ridiculous. I'd only had like salad and porridge in the day. Which isn't enough, by the way. As no, well. it's like, not. No, but, yeah. Um, threw that up. Um, but that was the literal, that's a massive red flag because I'd never done that before. Yeah. But then you start going down the line of things like bulimia and actual yeah. eating disorders. But then it? I did look at that. Bulimia is more like, um, what, or it seems to me, obviously I've not experienced it, that it's kind of... Um, you're so desperate to like because you don't want to put on weight so desperately that you want to like throw up so that no calories actually affect your is that right do you know what I mean so you're not actually taking in any of the the calories of stuff you yeah, still get I the satisfaction of eating it but yeah I would assume so you just, eat, you just eat whatever you want to eat yeah. and then you just that make might yourself, sound similar to what I've done sick. but mine was like I know that that little sausage roll weren't going to make me put on weight. That's not the reason I did it. It was more the for the mental side. Okay, yeah. Because I know that if I think that's okay, I'll probably just try and eat shit later. Yeah. Because I'll have said, oh, it's another day yeah. scrapped off. You're going to the splash van or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was, the, that was the big turning point. There's a picture of me. Um, we'll put this on. Grimmer in the taxi, that selfie we took. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not putting that on. Happy there. and smiling. <laughs> yeah, go on. You got to. Like, behind the eyes on that picture, even I can see it. Like, I just really didn't want to be there. I was really sad. They, I think it's really weird, right? That you've, you've mentioned that because I had this conversation <laughs> yesterday about a photo on my Instagram, right? Yeah. You know when you know that you weren't happy at the time? Yeah. And and some people would look at that photo and think, it's a normal photo. Like, he's mm. happy. 
but because you know that you were and you can see it and then and i told the girl i was talking to about it and she said oh my god yeah you can see it like behind your eyes so there's mm. the i think the second ever photo i ever put on instagram there was me and um our, fr- our good friend jim shout out jim um we were on a christmas bar crawl around squad right if you mm. remember because i got instagram like about a week before christmas 2018 and that photo was taken within about a week of when I broke up with my ex who I'd been with for four years and it was like a big serious relationship. And that was like my first sort of night out or day out, I suppose, like being single with with like a group of lads and they were all great. Like they, they go on a bar crawl anyway, Jordan's mm-hmm. mates, and they they invited me to go along with them. Um, so I felt really grateful that they like let me come and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's certainly that that time, was one of the lowest I've ever felt in my whole life. Like it was mm-hmm. like, obviously felt awful. And the photo is just a nice like selfie. It was just like smiling. Yeah. But you just what you look at it now, you can see like I'm I look completely like broken in it. Yeah. Because I was. It's like when you when people have committed suicide and stuff and you go on their social media, have you ever seen have you ever like no, experienced that? But you can of, tell the face. Yeah, and mm. you can and like but only because you know what they've done. You wouldn't know it. Yeah, it's only when you say respect, like respect yeah. you look back at it. But yeah, yeah I know so. what you mean. Um, yeah, so that was what, March? And then start very start of April, we went into lockdown, didn't we? Um, and I just, what was it? What was the like, the snapping point? I th- it was just one night. I d- I w- we were just lay there in bed, me and Louise, and I just came out with a whole lot for like an hour I told her everything from every penny I'd spent all the lying to her do you know what I mean all, like the weight gain the just the full extent of the, the problem she didn't know that I felt addicted and stuff I think I must have read some stuff and watched some videos and yeah, actually it linked home. it all to like this is a genuine big problem and obviously that Bev thing was I was on high alert from that stage um, and do you know what it was? They shut McDonald's. <laughs> <It sounds, laughs> that was the straw that broke the camel's so, back. This sounds so <laughs> like, They shut McDonald's, and I, in my head, I went, "Bonus, this is huge. Yeah, like, yeah this yeah. could really help me. Yeah, a lot. You it's just I mean? mad, isn't it? Yeah, I it is that. mad. But I told her, uh, and it, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see Louise in a minute. But how amazing she is to like. Sorry. Yeah, what was the response then? Because it's quite shocking. I, I've heard Jeez. little bits of this before, but the, just to let everybody know, like some of what Tommy's said so far and what he's saying, I've not actually heard much of this mm. before. So, and it's quite shocking, obviously really sad, like thing to hear. So, what was her reaction like when you told her? And she was cry- She was crying because, obviously, it's shocking. And, and that like, you hadn't told her. Yeah. 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 But how, how amazing of her to like hear that I've lied to her for so long, but not to be mad at me at all. Do you know what I mean? Just to like, just hold me basically. And just let me like get it all out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that it's it, it was horrible for her as well. Um. But that was even more motivation for me then to to sort it out which i did because like i had to i had to prove to her that it wasn't in vain do you know what i mean and that like once i've told her i can sort it and yeah. that i wasn't lying to her to hurt her do you know what i mean it yeah. was uh, just because i didn't want her to be ashamed of me basically um and then from there so i was 18 stone three and then now what well, i've written it down here 15 six so Oh, again, I put pictures up from the start of lockdown, and and now I'm much healthier. Do you know what I mean, yeah. much. So I've gone from XL clothes and thirty six, sorry, thirty eight inch waist jeans to thirty four inch and medium clothes, which yeah. is a yeah. massive. Do you know what I mean, it's amazing, and just pictures and everything. Like I just feel so much better in myself. Yeah, actually having a jawline. Do you know what I mean, like I I put the the picture on the in other words Instagram page of like. From episode one to now, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There, you can see a massive yeah, difference yeah. just in that alone. Yeah. Um, 
But what about like your relationship with food and stuff now then? So what's your situation? It's still hard. It's still hard. I haven't had I mean, one of these big blowouts. You know, the a bad one. You know, when you sit and you know, I've not lied to Louise about anything, basically, is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Um and 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 that's you know, from, um that's been helped a lot by Louise. So like we we were having like monthly treat days where she would literally just let me eat <laughs> a ridiculous <laughs> amount. <laughs> Can you remember? Yeah, I think that's just <coughs> that's just. I think this might be a good point to bring Louise in. Yeah, because um, I think we can talk about what's been going on in the last couple of months, what the plan is going forward and stuff. I think that might be nice to bring that in with Louise. Do you think? Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Nicole. <laughs> um, so, so in the timeline, then we are sort of mid lockdown now. So he's had his epiphany. He he told you about. Um, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, from your point of view, then, how was it to hear everything? Um, it's difficult because, in the back of my mind, I think I always knew that something was different. Mm-hmm. Um, but to actually kind of hear it, um, it was quite a relief, really. Um, and obviously, because. Bear in mind, when we were first together, he obviously told me about his dramatic weight loss and everything, mm-hmm. um, you know, and kind of as you've probably already spoken about, like being in diet culture, it's always difficult, like, yeah. even experiencing it myself. Um, you never get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was really nice like, to hear and I was just really supportive. Um, and then obviously to hear kind of, I don't know if obviously you've spoken about like the hiding food and yeah, everything yeah. um i was quite sad actually uh, yeah. it was quite sad to hear that like he didn't feel maybe confident enough to kind of open up to me about it mm-hmm. or he thought that i would judge him about it and um, because obviously we've been together a long time you know i'm gonna support him but obviously i know now i know kind of it was a much bigger thing for him than perhaps i thought yeah, yeah. um but just from then, I was just like, I'm just going to support you with it. And obviously, as I said, you know, kind of dieting and going through weight loss myself, you know, it was nice. We, we couldn't help each other. Really, yeah. So what, what's your experience with that then? So. Um, OK, so it was weird, actually, kind of the same the same time. Uh, you know, we were working at Dragon Manor 2017. That was my second season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think around that point, I was at my lowest weight. Um, like, bear in mind, kind of over the last few years, I've only lost about two stone <laughs> compared <laughs> to, say, like, Tommy's weight yeah, yeah. loss. Um, but I was kind of struggling with food as well. Like, I was uh, severely kind of restricting. Um, I only recently told Tommy this, actually, but there were quite a few times where I had to kind of go home from Drayton Manor because I was so fatigued because you I wasn't eating, eating enough. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. I just thought it was illness. But actually looking back, it was because I just wasn't eating enough. Like, Did you not eat at the canteen either then? No, I refused. <laughs> I was saying how it was, it was one of the things that attracted you to me that I used to have the cheese I salad. I loved it. Box. I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only one that brings my own food yeah. in because obviously everyone was eating like the chicken nugget <laughs> Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I just got this image of a canteen where everyone's got like turkey twizzlers and then there's just two solo people you two <laughs> sat eating like egg salad rolling their eyes at them then you just look yeah. over do you mean and your eyes meet or something and like <laughs> at, at last <laughs> plays and then I was just there like with, with my Tupperware box sorry. I was just I was just there with my Tupperware like you know bits of chicken broccoli spinach yeah. in it and everyone there up. with their chips and nuggets yeah. I felt so like I isolated said, like, the, the yeah. frenzy on a Friday like it's nuggets yeah. it's nuggets it's nuggets day <laughs> Um, yeah, it was just like, oh, God. And then, obviously, because where I was on the carousel at Drayton Manor, if any of you know where that is, um, <laughs> the amount of people I could just see walking past and then walking back with their food. Yeah, and I was yeah. just thinking, oh, I can't, I can't, I couldn't live like this, like day in, day out, obviously. Yeah. Um, but then I actually I actually remember the first time I properly saw Tommy um, at Drayton Manor, and obviously I was coming on my break, and he was sat there with a cheese salad, and I was like, <laughs> wow! <laughs> Like, wow, <laughs> someone else who's like quite conscious. Cause obviously, bear in mind, he was at his, probably like his lowest weight at this point. Yeah. I was like, wow, there's someone else who's like um, kind of really conscious about their health and diet and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a massive bonding point 
for me and Tommy. Like, yeah. That was a lot of our conversations. That, do you remember, like when yeah. we first spoke on, on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> um, Is that what it was on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we spoke a lot about like weight loss and everything. So I think that's where we bonded. Yeah. We both like keep each other on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Don't we? Like we need each other for that big time. Yeah. You know I mean? Absolutely. So Louise works, um, your job is like a mental health worker. Yes. So I'm just wondering if whether or not, because of your own personal experience of the, of the diet side and mm-hmm. also the fact that you work in a mental health mm-hmm. job, you're always like the perfect person to have yeah. as a partner <laughs> in that situation, aren't yeah, you? So yeah. You got any experience of other, like within your job of like men- food related mental health problems? Or? Um... <sighs> It's a way of gaining control where you've lost control perhaps in other aspects of your life as well. That's what they say kind of a lot typically with our, um, anorexia, like binge eating, yeah. uh, bulimia. Um, it's all, it all stems from gaining control because, you know, if you've got control over your diet, you know, you've, you're exerting control over something, yeah. perhaps where you've not got control elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so it gets really, really tricky because then you got you get like comorbidities, you know, anxiety and stuff like that. And, and uh, with anxiety as well, um, a lot of that, you know, you want control over something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really quite complicated with regards to kind of mental health and kind of eating and stuff like that. But... Just with diet, as I said, like it, it can really take over, as you know, like, you know, when you can't stop thinking about it. And I've, I've come out of that. Obviously, you know, Tommy's obviously kind of exposed the fact that, you know, he considers it like an addiction. Um, but I'd say I've definitely kind of been obsessed, like really, really obsessive. And I say like 2017, kind of around the time where I met Tommy, that was when I was at my worst in terms of being obsessive. Yeah. And and with that, I'd I'd binge. I'd I'd be really restrictive, as I said, go with me Tupperware and have a really tiny lunch and a snack and everything. But then I'd go home and just raid the cupboards. Mm. Like, you know, the kind of um the little like kinder child bars you can yeah. get, kinder milk, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'd go and get one because my brother used to have them all the time. I'd get one and then see because the packets are like this, like yeah. those mini ones. And then I'd keep going back, Just, yeah. back, 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 get a bowl of cereal, have a look what's in mm-hmm. the cupboard, you know. So, you know, it, it, restriction, it's going to kind of um, uh, result in perhaps binging yeah, and, and stuff. It's because it's that balance. Our body needs that balance. So if we're restricting at some point that restriction's got to stop yeah. because your body needs needs that fuel needs that energy yeah there's something else we touched on earlier um which i want to get your opinion on yeah. being a girl as well and being in, <laughs> in our generation is um <laughs> we were talking about diet and and body image issues mm-hmm. and how like social media and things like love island and people like that yeah um how that impacts the mental health of like young people mm, what, yeah. what's your opinion on that <sighs> It's crazy because um, it's like it, it, you see it especially on things like Instagram mm-hmm. because especially kind of when Love Island stars kind of come out, they're all over Instagram, you know, that's how they get their advertisements for their businesses mm-hmm. or whatever out there. And, you know, obviously a lot of young people, and they're only getting younger, um, are, are exposed to social media and everything now. Um, so... Um, it, it's really, it's really, it's really sad. Actually, it's really sad because it's kind of you get the whole like body dysmorphia thing start as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I heard you mention it actually, kind of about genetics. And a lot of people aren't educated yeah. um, on how genetics play a role as well. And you know, um, I mean, people people don't realise that as soon as these Love Island stars find out they're going on Love Island, they put themselves through hell. Um, to look good so it might not be kind of actually what they look like and mm-hmm. you know a, a, a lot of people have to have therapy after the violence because a lot of judgments made about them are about their appearance yeah, and everything course, and yeah. obviously you notice um, a lot of the contestants are typically this really tiny size A mm-hmm. you know or regarded males you know masculine shredded. gym yeah, yeah. shredded looking thing um but i mean that's all just for tv it's all appearance that's what i say like with instagram it's not real like it's not it's not what people actually look like you know mm-hmm. you get photo editing everything all these days so i mean there's times i've had to come off instagram i've got friends that kind of have had to come off social media because it all gets too much sometimes yeah. it's this comparison culture um 
and like it, it's just I, I don't think there's enough kind of education about that side of stuff yeah, like there should be in schools mm-hmm. um like conversations about this you know about social media the effect of social media on mental health yeah. and, and things like that and and uh, don't get me wrong i watch love island yeah. i really like it we've watched it together you know it, it, it's good it's good tv um but kind of the effects of it. Yeah, it's good TV when you're coming at it from the knowledge that it's not real. Yeah. Which you are, whereas... Absolutely. It's, it's the fear that people are watching it without that knowledge. Scary, yeah, exactly. And I think it should be something that, especially like young people, um, are educated on. Yeah, I don't think it'd be nice to see somebody who comes off Love Island and be quite big, so like Molly May or someone like that. Then go and <laughs> what a woman! What a woman! <laughs> Every time Louise sees a picture of her on Instagram, she just goes, "What a woman!" Oh, I love Molly May. <laughs> Don't you think it'd be nice to see somebody like that though, like front some sort of nationwide campaign for kids about how social media is not real, and you know, yes. com- comparing a photo that is actually taken to the one that eventually goes up, or mm. how our angles work and lighting. You and should all do how that. Sort you, of should, you should for a year completely shred yourself really unhealthy go on love island win and then go back to normal and say it's all bullshit yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah, definitely i mean don't get me wrong i'm seeing a lot more now on the internet about you know how social media like what you see on social media is not necessarily real what's going on so i think the conversations are starting but it's actually kind of kind of uh sliding it into a curriculum and making it almost compulsory something to talk about because obviously you know we've noticed increasing kind of mental health conditions you know disordered eating anxiety disorders this diet culture fitness culture you know gyms are part like packed with young people Mm -hmm. i mean i've been to the my local gym and seen like what looks like 14 year olds i think yeah i've got the same at my gym as well i was actually i just thought to myself oh my god like the gym was the last thing i thought of (laughs) like i didn't even think of it i didn't probably know what it was like back then yeah and so it just shows actually that like these TV programs, you know, these kind of role models as such are are having a, an impact on our younger generation. Yes, yeah. it, it needs to 100%. kind of be tackled. Yeah. So if you want to sort of go back then to sort of the timeline and carry on. Yeah. So obviously after I told you about everything, um, we then started to look at what we can do because what what I was eating, um, and then having the one treat day a month is what we used to do wasn't it yes i we, we <laughs> so let's just quickly touch on the one treat day a month and that's why i wanted to wait until you came in to talk about <laughs> that because um some of what some of your meals are quite funny aren't they really yeah so Correct, let's go to the first treat day then <laughs> so first treat day what did we have for breakfast we had it wasn't it like a four rounds of egg and bacon sandwiches yeah i yeah. hate that you say rounds well, it's a round Toast. of bread, isn't it? It's a round. Two, you, do you mean two yeah, sandwiches? Yeah, four sli- yeah, four slices. It's because he eats it in three right. minutes as so a minute break and does it again. For <laughs> anyone that doesn't understand that, it's two egg and bacon sandwiches, essentially. Yeah, four, a round is one piece of bread, so two rounds yeah. is a sandwich. Jesus. How deep this podcast is, <laughs> is. and we're arguing about <laughs> Because I can't stand it when he says it. Yeah, so if right. someone says we're going 12 rounds with Mike Tyson, they only mean six sandwiches. Really. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, and then what was the sweet thing? Did we have a pan? Oh. No, we had a... Didn't you, didn't you buy some frozen pancakes? Yes, I had a whole pack of bird's eye frozen pancakes, <laughs> eight pancakes. What did I have? Brioche, chocolate brioche rolls you had, and then I also had one of them. Yeah, yeah, so I, I think I had two brioche rolls and two sandwiches. Yeah, and then... <laughs> and, and I decided to pause there. And for dinner, I had... Did we get dinner that, or lunch? Uh, lunch. I had like a big grab, uh, a big packet of crisps, wasn't it? Like a huge one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty-four flapjack bites. Yeah. Um, and I think that was it for. You know, I don't want to go too. Hard. <laughs> and then dinner was that time with kebab. <laughs> um, what was dinner? Yeah, because it was after Bev and Miles's. No, was it McDonald's when I didn't? I threw it off. No, no, no. Oh, okay. That was the second one, second or third one. I think the first one was a, a, a town with the kebab house. I town think. With kebab. So large donut kebab, large cheesy chips. Mm-hmm. And then, oh yeah, oh yeah. And then I've had, um, and then I had. What do we have for dessert? It all blurs into one, to be honest with you. Yeah. Mm, so, we probably so, just had picky bits. 
So the, <laughs> the idea was be really strict in the week. Really strict. I started by running again, which was the best thing I've ever done, um, just mentally and everything. Um, and it makes your eating, it makes them addictions and cravings go away a lot easier because you're just focusing on your running and how good that makes you feel and... And you know that if you start to eat badly, it affects your runs as well. Do you know what okay. I mean? Like your runs get harder oh, if yeah. you're eating crap. Mm-hmm. So, th- so it's really good. Um, and yeah, the, the pla- it, was, it was just basically one treat day a month. And, and I knew that that wasn't healthy. And you knew that wasn't healthy for me. Yeah. Well. I mean, Louise was still eating know. normally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She joined on my treat day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Any um, opportunity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I knew that wasn't healthy. And I knew that wasn't a long-term fix. We both did. However, I was dropping four or five pounds a week mm. yeah do you know what i mean mm. so like big changes and, better, better than a tenner a day isn't it? Uh, <laughs> and um <laughs> so i knew that you know short just for now because it was making me happy and making me lose weight during lockdown yeah. carry on doing it um and then it was only probably a month or so ago on it that we'd start like we changed the rules a little bit because i, I did feel as if my mental mindset and stuff had drastically improved mm. the reason it's better now than it was is because I'm not hiding anything and everyone knows the full extent of how bad it is and Louise knows the full extent mm. of how bad it is. So when you're not hiding something, you can work at ways of looking at it, can't you? And like Louise has taught me some like CBT stuff, you know, like um, mindfulness and um, this little thing. <laughs> so like if we're out and there's like something really tempting and like you're starting to like really want it and get annoyed about it or sad about it like there's little things you can do like physical things you can do to like take your mind off it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it really does work like what? Is any, like literally that so that's one example mm-hmm. or there's like let's um, explain what you're doing for the Spotify um, just tapping my two fingers on my forehead <laughs> really quickly yeah uh, there's something I read up on it it's something about like you know you, you've just focusing all your senses on that one little thing that you're doing on your head yeah that, that it kind of um, makes you forget about the one yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Um, I said one, uh, it's like the five senses technique, mm -hmm. didn't I? Um, It can be really helpful to kind of bring you to the present moment. So um, for anyone who's interested. um, So essentially, when we get like consumed with quite uh, negative thoughts, really quite racing, overwhelming thoughts, like perhaps saying your situation, you know, thinking of all different foods, you know, what I could eat, oh, I could eat this, could eat that. Um, the five senses technique is what we call a grounding technique. So it kind of it's like a healthy distraction from say negative, overwhelming thoughts in your mind to actually what's going on in the present and kind of how you involve your five senses in that. Um, it's like you think you you're like five things you can see in front of you. You know, four things you can hear, three things you can smell or touch. Uh, you know, two things you can touch, smell, and then one thing you can taste because it, it's it's forcing you to pay attention to what's oh, right. going on now yeah. rather than focusing on what's going on in the past or the present because obviously a lot when we think quite negatively or you're anxious it's either things that have gone on in the past or what's going to happen in the future yeah. so the, those kind of techniques kind of force you to so focus on what's going on now I'd say that's the most yeah. helpful one I still use that Do you use now. that now? Yeah But quite in what situation would you use that? Um, so like I said in the car is a I was saying earlier that like me mm-hmm. alone in the car driving to yes. work and back is the danger territory because mm. that's where all the bad stuff was happening yeah. eating and stuff so I can just be driving along and do that do you know what I mean and I'll feel fine mm-hmm. um, what uh, what five things you can see yeah yeah just like right so steering wheel the shop I'm driving past um, KFC so McDonald's <laughs> KFC McDonald's go <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. you know what can I hear like the road or the cars traffic Radio. line yeah yeah, yeah. stuff like that and it really does work it puts you in the moment I suppose yeah. and so, breathing techniques as well yeah. you've done that, yeah, that uh, not good. just applied like to the food kind of stuff but just general day to day I don't class myself as you know like now and in general life I don't um I wouldn't say I suffer with that kind of thing. I have my moments, but mm. the, the week before reopen of work, the restaurant, oh I was terrible. Yeah. It's the worst I've ever been. Mm-hmm. The stress. Yeah. Anxiety and stress. Yeah. yeah. The first mm. time I've ever felt anxiety, like, affect me physically. Yeah. Like, I was getting pains in, like, weird places, like, tight chests, couldn't breathe properly. It was just horrendous. Yeah. Wasn't it? You were really definitely bad. not yourself. So yeah. I was like, I was right. feeling sick every day, and I was <laughs> yeah. like, I need to go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the day we opened and got back to normal, just every pain and sickness went 
Mm. Like, yeah. it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of where I'm at now, I don't want all family and friends watching this, like treading on eggshells around me. That's that'll be the biggest thing that upsets me. Like, if that was to happen, because mm. I don't, I don't need you to like act any differently around me. Do you know what I mean? I don't want anyone to be like, oh, I don't offer him a yeah. biscuit. <laughs> That's not what it's like at all. Yeah. Someone offering me a biscuit and me saying no isn't a problem. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to be depressed or whatever yeah. feeling that. Because no. now I've got it more under control and I understand it and blah, blah, blah. It's fine. It's more stuff like, so Mitch took me to Costco. Uncle Mitch. <laughs> shout out Uncle Mitch. And it was like amazing. Really good. I've never been. It was superb, like the amount of stuff and whatever. Yeah. But it was just so overwhelming, wasn't it? Yeah. Then I got back to Mitchell Lindsay's and opened up to them about it, about all this, and cried in front of them and everything. Yeah. And it, that's what it's more like. It's more like um, that situation at Costco made me realise how much control it had over my life because I was constantly just like panicky and like, oh my God, all this stuff. I've like, never been, so I, can't I, don't, have. I don't know what I don't know what you're talking Do you know about. What I mean? Was it like the cakes? Yeah, there's like just loads of nice stuff. Isn't there? Everything you could possibly think of yeah. I have at Costco. Yeah. So I, wasn't cry- I, wasn't, I didn't cry at Michelin Lindsay's because I'm like, I really wanted a donut. I'm going to have a donut. It wasn't that. It was like, <laughs> just to let you know, like I had like mini panic attacks slash overwhelming in Costco. And this is the reason why. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's the upsetting. That's what addiction is. The This is how it's affecting my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just accepted it as something that I live with and yeah. deal with. I'm mm. never not going to want to just eat everything. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's in there all the time. Yeah. yeah. But you just have to find ways of living with it. And how I look now, um, I'm actually happy with. Probably for the first time yeah, in a long yeah. time. that's good. Um, and other people say that, don't they? And <laughs> you and whatever like yeah, I don't want to be thin I'm and what's your diet anymore. at the moment then so do you, are you restricted anyway at the minute or um well, what do we do so we what do we, we do? have we have one meal of a week don't we where we have a bit of a treat so we'll maybe go out and have yeah. like a dessert and, and a main of whatever mm-hmm. we want so like we went to a pizza express didn't we yeah yeah um, and I'd like pizza and then we got a dessert from Sainsbury's or something yeah so we kind of Tommy prefers to kind of keep it together so how if we go out for a meal and kind of have a pudding he prefers to keep that on one day yeah yeah, but, yeah. You know. so it's just like or like this is my indulgence for the week and then the rest of the week I can stay on track yeah do you know what I mean mm-hmm. I know what I mean so it's, it's like with me I, 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 I like eat healthy in the week and then be a bit more relaxed at the weekend yeah that's, that's, that's literally me yeah and it that's has to me. be on my day off as well yeah, yeah because if I have if it's on a day that I'm working let's say I'm starting at four if I had like a big dirty breakfast with Louise in the morning I, there's too much danger that I'm then going to go to work and think oh well I've eaten that oh, this morning yeah. I can just eat yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. my cheat day today anyway I need to be it. like yeah. supervised <laughs> do you know what I mean and I'm not af- ashamed of it. That's one major thing why I'm about to put this out to however many people are going to watch it. Like, yeah. I'm not ashamed of it. It's just, yeah. it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not particularly keen on drinking. Like when I go on a night out, I will obviously, but mm-hmm. we don't drink at home. Yeah, I think lockdown, like the whole lockdown situation has really kind of um, reinforced kind of, you know, drink isn't actually like that important. Yeah, I think we yeah. had one, I think we had like two no, let's say four maximum. We probably had four cans of cider each during the, the f- family four quiz months night. Of lockdown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, so drink, like not addicted to drugs, not ad- addicted to gambling, haven't got any money problems. Do you know what I mean? But this is my thing. I just want to like own it. Yeah, but so, you, sometimes I'm proud of it, and that sounds really weird. Is that I'm proud of the fact that I've identified it know that it's a problem and like looking at ways of living yeah. with it yeah. you should be but are you going to obviously because if you are an alcohol you can <coughs> alcohol um addict you can you know go to yeah. aa and the same for like drugs and stuff are you gonna get some like proper professional like help do you think you need yeah, to yeah i've spoken to you about it yeah I? at definitely. the moment at the moment i feel like the techniques louise has taught me and like just being more open about it is helping me in general mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it definitely wouldn't be something that i rule out no yeah because anyway. with that kind of stuff it all kind of get to the roots of it and i think that's really important to kind of not recover, I guess that's the wrong word, but kind of getting to the roots of kind of the difficulty is the first step to be able to kind of manage it. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. Yeah. Mm. As well. So oh. What would you say if, for people who are watching this who feel like they might be 
in the same position as you. Firstly, how would you say to somebody whether or not they could actually decide whether this was a problem they had? Or how do they differentiate from mm-hmm. somebody who just likes food and they mm-hmm. think oh, that might be it to what you know that you've got? Is it more... It's more like, on an emotional slash mental health level, I think. Yeah. It, if you're struggling to turn down fattening foods and stuff and you love a takeaway and you love a cake and a biscuit and it's just like that's just life and that's okay then that's fine you're probably just like a foodie or sometimes greedy yeah. foodie you're okay yeah, to yeah. say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if like if it's making you sad deep down that you can't break out of that cycle yeah and you're just in the same loop all the time then you need to potentially look at Mm. look at the symptoms of it and stuff so i looked at like symptoms of food addiction and it was like eating regardless of how full you are eating to the point of feeling sick hiding evidence of eating yeah Every, i think there was 10 points and nine of them were me like yeah really? you know i mean so just look mm. into it um, what would you say to somebody if they find that they have got that or you know they meet all the symptoms as well like what do you think that is a good because obviously you're, you're fortunate that you've got Louise, really. Yeah, you? so I, I probably would recommend seeing, you know, seeing someone. Yeah, because if you if you whatever. didn't have like a support network like that, yeah, mm. I'd almost own it. That's what. Yeah. If, if one person watches this video and thinks actually I'm going to be proud of this and, and just admit it and work towards it, then that's worth doing. Yeah, mm, well yeah. worth doing. I mean, yeah, the first step is acknowledging that there might be a problem. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the first kind of step because I yeah. guess kind of with you, do you feel like maybe you're in denial for some time kind of about oh, it yeah. yeah yeah so i guess kind of the first thing is acknowledging that you there might be something kind of going on and then kind of seeking the help from yeah. that talking to someone opening up to a friend a family member yeah. like you did with me and have one, that support there yeah. first and one thing i would say like it's all once you have acknowledged it and it's actually quite this this is a, a weird word to use for it it's like quite cool in a way like to have your thing that you know you've got and like you that you're working on this yeah every every run you go on you're thinking about it and you're like this is i mean i'm doing this to better myself mm-hmm. and to keep this away good, yeah it's it's kind of good when you you find your uh, achilles heel sometimes rather than it like yeah. hiding away from you mm-hmm. sweet all right so we'll wrap it up then yeah dominoes uh, now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well i'm grateful that you've i know it's obviously must be difficult for you to talk about mm-hmm. so a thing to talk about so i'm sure everybody watching as well is grateful that you've um no i'm glad i spoke said. about it because i know there's going to be friends watching family watching colleagues watching and you know that should show the full extent of how not ashamed of it i am yeah you know i mean and yeah. i hope that helps some people yeah. so. and thanks louise for coming on as well let That's us know if you want to see louise care. back on as a Hi. guest at some point down the line <laughs> Don't do hate me. <laughs> <laughs> we can do a full interview one day about Tommy. Mm-hmm. We just Tommy would be out of it. Me and you can just sit and slag him off. We could yeah. do a Mister and Mrs. thing. That'd be cool. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you for watching, everyone. Um, that was episode fourteen. Um, please like the video if you've liked what you've seen. Uh, like I said, it's a different tone to what we usually do, isn't it? But um i still want it to to be a feel good thing ultimately you know mm-hmm. um so please like subscribe plenty of more good stuff to come are you laughing at like and subscribe <laughs> like for like sub for sub. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you all next time bye thank you